About two years ago, I did a video on the beginning of the Infinity brand, back when Nissan decided to get into the luxury game. It was quite an interesting time for the Japanese manufacturers because they had both Lexus and Acura coming out with vehicles in the 80s and 90s, and Infinity as well. Their first SUV was this 1997 Infinity QX4, and it's based off the second generation Nissan Pathfinder, and for the most part is an upscale version of it. It looks very similar, at least the shape is, but not only was the inside updated, the exterior got quite a facelift over the regular Nissan Pathfinder. Now this particular version, the first year of production, is a 3.3 liter V6 engine producing 168 horsepower, 196 pound-feet of torque. Not amazing numbers for a mid-size SUV, but still pretty impressive considering this was a direct competitor to something like the Acura SLX. The Lexus GX was a little bit bigger, actually quite a bit bigger, than these two, so this was directly competing with the Acura. And if you think back, there weren't any other luxury SUVs at the time. Mercedes was just rolling out the M-Class, BMW didn't have anything yet, and the only other real SUV that sort of had this shape was something like the Mercedes G-Wagon. That was pretty expensive. But this ran from 1997 till 2003. The facelift came out in 2001 and it added the 3.5 liter VQ series V6 engine. So you get more power with that. So if you're looking at this as a daily driver and you want more power, that might be the model years to go with. But if you wanna save a little bit on fuel economy, these ones are great too. Now we're gonna be going over everything that you need to know about these vehicles. There aren't too many of them on the road. Here in Canada, I only found two for sale. There's one here in Quebec and it is an absolute wreck. I don't think I've seen a car in worse shape, but that one maybe could be good for parts. And there is one in Edmonton for about $4,500 Canadian, which I don't think is too bad given what you're getting out of this. It is a very handsome looking SUV and especially with the black paint, I think it looks quite nice. Now it's not just the styling that was different over the Pathfinder, this Infiniti QX4 got a new four-wheel drive system that had better off-road capabilities than the Pathfinder counterpart. It would allow you to not only have a rear-wheel drive biased setup, but it would distribute power evenly 50-50 if you had it in automatic mode. There was also an optional limited slip differential and all the QX4s came with a four low crawl mode. So if you really needed to go off-roading, this would probably do a pretty good job with it. So you have to think back to the 90s. There weren't tons of features that came with luxury cars. It was more about the brand image and the comfort on the inside. These seats are insanely comfortable. Very thick padding on them, leather seats throughout. We do have wood trim on the inside. And essentially we've got headlights, fog lights, and a sunroof up top. Heated seats won't be added until much later in the production cycle for this vehicle. But I wanna take it on the road and talk about some of the things that you would be interested in if you're thinking about buying one of these models and anything else that you would need to know about either the Nissan Pathfinder R50 or this Infiniti QX4. All right, my friends, we are off in the 1997 Infiniti QX4. Now there is no fuel economy results for this. You know, we're not taking it on our test loop. But there are a couple things I want to talk about really quickly because I'm sure there's somebody out there who is already feverishly typing away on their keyboard telling me how wrong I am. This specific car has heated seats. Now I mentioned that it is an option in 2003 and it seems like that's probably in the States. What we have found in the past and even with new cars today is some features are not available in the US. And I think that's probably the case here where because we live in a much colder climate, we got heated seats, but in the States, you are kind of out of luck. So it does have heated seats. Nice thing to have, makes my bum nice and warm. Now let's talk about the interior and exterior of this car. First of all, I think it's a very handsome looking car. I do like it in black. I mean, this is kind of what the standard utility vehicle of the mid to late 90s looked like. So I like the look of it. And I think it's held up pretty well over the last 25 years, right? This is a 25 year old car and I think it's held up very well. Now the inside here, pretty straightforward. I always like that about the Japanese manufacturers. We've got all the controls in the center area here. We have a digital climate control system, which is nice to have a Bose audio system. I have heard even back when it was new, it wasn't the best audio system out there. So some people might replace it, but I do like that this car is essentially all original. So that is a nice thing to have there. We do have the transfer case selector just below that. So we're in two wheel drive mode. I don't plan on going into four wheel drive. It is very nice out right now. You don't need it. 
but it is a good feature to have. I mean, if you do live somewhere that the climate is a little rough, it's a good feature to have. So there's a lot of good I, I like about this. I mean, I would love to drive the Acura SLX to compare. I mean, that was really just an Isuzu Trooper that Honda put their Acura badge on to try to upsell it. At least this was originally a Nissan that they rebadged and upgraded it a bit. If you think about the first generation Cadillac Escalade, that was literally a GMC Yukon with some Cadillac badges on it. So I feel that Infiniti has taken a little bit more care to make this different from their Nissan counterpart. But so far, I'm impressed with it. I love driving these cars. I absolutely love driving essentially anything from the 90s or earlier. So it doesn't really matter what it is. Yeah, the power on this is gonna be pretty low compared to especially today's standards. If you think about the direct successor to this after a couple generations, the Infiniti QX60, which is another mid-size crossover. That was the successor to this. I mean, that is a much bigger vehicle, has a lot more power, 168 horsepower. This thing isn't quick at all, but it will get the job done, which is good because, you know, even though this is a pretty heavy vehicle, I haven't had any issues so far with power speed getting up to speed and everything it feels pretty good the ride on here is also very nice for again a 25 year old vehicle and you do feel a little bit of the suspension and i have seen that when it comes to again not really common problems but some issues that have been reported by owners that they do feel a little you know issue with the suspension system but again for an, a car with mileage this one 237,000 kilometers which isn't bad at all yeah, you're gonna have things that need to be maintained and repaired so it's not the end of the world but overall pretty impressed with how this drives for 25 years i like the look of it i like the interior and the comfort okay that's the key here that's really the key for any 90s luxury vehicle but the seats are so thick like my bottom fits right into it i'm super comfortable now i am as low as i can go and as far back as i can go i guess back in the 90s the manufacturers out there didn't think anybody would get this fat so i'm kind of maxed out here on <laughs> on seating position as well as the seatbelt. I don't really have a ton of play here. It's only been a couple cars that I've driven that are like that and really nothing recent. It's almost non-existent. They make the belts a lot longer. So keep that in mind. If you're a big guy or you're tall, you might have some issues. That's like the back seat for me when I was filming all the B-roll, getting the car prepared, I actually wasn't able to fit in the back and it has nothing to do with the front seat positions. It's just literally the seats are so thick with bolstering and padding and leather that I hit the ceiling. So I could fit back there. If the seats were pushed up just a little bit and I kind of laid back a bit, I think I'd be okay. But the space on this is gonna be tight compared to any modern vehicle and that's pretty much expected. You know, the 90s was a very interesting time when it came to luxury vehicles. As I mentioned outside, it wasn't so much about the tech and features, it was about the image and the brand and also ultimate comfort. So it's what you're gonna be looking for if you're buying something like this. But I really do think that the type of buyer who is gonna be looking at something like this Infiniti QX4 wants something essentially unique. Like I said, I can't remember the last time I've seen one of these on the road. Pretty much doesn't exist anymore. The few people that held on to them, they're either holding on to them because they like them, or they just eventually get to the point that you can't keep them on the road now. Rust is the absolute killer of these cars, and it's too bad because a lot of these cars are being taken off the road because of rust. So if you do find one, and I hope you do. I hope if you're looking at this video, either you're just curious, you like to see what's going on, but if you actually are in the market for one of these vehicles and you find one, please do whatever you can to keep it on the road. It's like what we talked about when we did the Acura Vigor. That was a car that probably most people have never heard of. Same with the Acura SLX. I mean, these are vehicles that just today barely exist. So if you're able to find one, hold on to it and keep it and, and try to restore it and do what it, you know, do what it was meant to be done with, right? Drive it, get it on the road and go. I mean, it's not sit, meant to be sitting in the garage, so you wanna get it on the road and get driving with it, but definitely try to preserve one if you find it.
Now I mentioned this a little bit when we wrap up, do our buyer's guide, but again, this vehicle has 237,000 kilometers on it and everything works. I mean, there are no error lights on the dashboard. Everything works on this vehicle. All the power windows, the power seats, the heated seats, everything works on this car. So if you are thinking about long-term reliability, at least for the most part, the electronics and stuff should be fine. It's gonna come down to obviously how it's been maintained. I don't know. I mean, I don't know enough about these cars to be able to say if it's going to be maintained or not. You know, some cars, they're owned by a certain group of people, like original old people who bought them. I don't know if a lot of elderly people bought these cars when they were new and when they were younger, and uh, now they're getting rid of them. So you have to kind of keep an eye out there and look. But if you do find them in good shape, yeah, they should last quite a while but I'm enjoying it I do like I mean I'm telling you I, I can't express enough how much I love driving vehicles like this I mean it just brings joy to be able to see something like this and be able to enjoy it and I'm, I'm glad that I'm able to do it the owner of this vehicle drove all the way out from Ontario not just to see me but he came from Ontario in order to uh, meet up with me and we're able to film this video so I'm glad that they've been able to hold on to this car for as long as they have and, and enjoy it and share it with me so I can share it with you guys. That's the whole point. It's fun just to own it yourself, but if you're able to share that joy with other people, it's even better. So big thanks. But I'm liking it. I just, I cannot remember the last time I've seen one of these on the road. It is a rare sight. I, uh, I don't know. I mean, if you've seen them, if you're in a market that's got them, let me know in the comments below. But even the Pathfinder, I can't remember the last time I've seen one of those on the road from this generation. I mean, they just do not exist anymore. Let's see if we go, not gutting it, but hey, you know what? Not bad at all for like 20, 30% pedal. It <laughs> picked up speed pretty quick. So if you're worried 168 horsepower, doesn't sound like a lot. It's 168 horsepower from the 90s. I feel like in the 90s, that horsepower meant a lot more than it does today. But I think we should go back to the studio. I wanna talk about the things you need to look out for if you're in the market for one of these and go over all the buyer's guide information you need to better prepare yourself if you are in the market for the first and only generation Infiniti QX4. Now, I feel like I say this about most of the luxury vehicles that we do here on Test Drive, the classic luxury vehicles, but there aren't that many common problems. I wouldn't say that the Infiniti QX4 is reliable, but I also wouldn't say that it isn't reliable either. There really isn't anything that is a big red flag to me, aside from basic maintenance and wear and tear. The one thing that I found by going on different Nissan forums was rust. Rust is a pretty severe killer of the QX4 or Nissan Pathfinder. In fact, there were several safety recalls over the years about specific issues that happened because of rust. So I would definitely suggest as we do with pretty much any car that we feature here on Test Drive, take it to a trusted mechanic before buying it to make sure that it is in good mechanical shape. Take a look at the underside of the vehicle, specifically with the frame, they will rust out. If you live here in Quebec, chances are it already has. That's why there really aren't that many for sale. If you're in the southern parts of the US, California, places like that, you'll probably find a lot more of them and they should be in pretty decent shape. So keep that in mind, number one killer for these vehicles. Now I have also found that the oil will burn from the engine a little bit or there'll be some leaks, sometimes pretty severe, but again, that's not necessarily a common problem. With higher mileage engines of any kind, you're gonna be seeing those issues. But for the most part, I found that these vehicles will go anywhere between 180,000 to 280,000 miles, which is pretty good, some even more than that. So if you're looking to buy this as an affordable daily driver, you want something different, you want something that stands out, this could definitely be the way to go. And the only other thing too, it's again, not really a common problem, but because this uses a slightly more sophisticated all-wheel drive system than the Pathfinder, you might wanna take a look at that and make sure that it has been serviced and maintained properly over the years. Again, we're looking at a 25-year-old luxury vehicle. You are gonna to have to spend a little bit more on this than you would on other vehicles. So keep that in mind, budget that in when you're looking at buying one of these cars. Now I mentioned that this vehicle had a facelift in 2001 that essentially added that bigger engine. It also updated the interior and exterior along with a new dashboard, analog clock and Xenon headlights. So might be some pluses there if you're looking at those. But again, because there aren't too many of them on the market, if you really do want a QX4, you might just have to take what you can find. 
2002 is very interesting. It added an optional adaptive cruise control system. It uses lasers to see where the distance is with the car in front of you and obviously adapt the cruise control based on that. We don't see that too often, especially from something like Infiniti. Those were features usually found on a Mercedes S-Class at the time, considering that was an optional extra on this. That was pretty cool. You also could have had an optional leather and wood steering wheel that had the radio controls built into it. And I'm sure it would have been very popular, the rear VCR entertainment system. Yes, you could have had a VCR on this in the early 2000s. A DVD system was also optional, but I think the VCR would be pretty cool today. And then if you find a 2003, most of the optional extras became standard for that year, including more airbags, as well as heated seats finally becoming an option. So again, as always, make sure you go through the vehicle as thoroughly as you can before you buy it. It is a higher mileage vehicle at this point. I don't expect a lot of these are gonna be low mileage garage queens. People use these and they use them well. And it shows because a lot of these are still performing very well in today's market. So if you find one, I would really suggest holding on to it. I can't remember the last time I've seen one of these on the road or even the Nissan Pathfinder variant because they just don't exist. So take a look for them. If you find one, hold on to it just like any of the other luxury Japanese cars we've talked about over the years because they will be worth something. If you have any questions about this episode of Test Drive on this 1997 Infiniti QX4, please leave a comment below. Give a thumbs up to the video if you liked it and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care.